fate of Gundabad. Alright, greetings and welcome to another Lord of the Rings online video. Um, I was in the mood for uh, some Lord of the Rings online, uh, especially uh, because of the that fates of Gundabad, uh, or Gundabad, fate, fate of Gundabad, or fates of Gundabad um, expansion, uh, particularly because of the new Brawler class. Um, I don't have it right now, um, and right now the um, the Brawler class is not. Uh, available for um, to uh, to to play it. It is not an option when you because uh, uh, normally, if uh, if I had first of all the space, uh, if I create a new character and then I get to pick the list of classes, um, normally you would should be able to see that brawler class, but it would say locked, uh, and then you have to pay money to uh, unlock it um, but right now that's not an option you can only get that class when you buy the expansion which is like $40 uh, with the tax it's like 43 um, I heard in May that it's gonna be available as standalone um, but part of me cannot wait I would have gotten it like right now but I didn't want to risk something there was a charge that um, uh, I'll say that was made, but uh, I um, I got that fixed, so I, I'm not gonna be charged. But the only problem is, um, is they charged it and then they um, retracted it, and it was all pretty much done the same day. So I'm not sure if they're gonna <coughs> charge me, uh, and then um, and then after like a week, uh, then put it back or if it just canceled each other out purchasing it and and then uh canceling it the same day um so maybe you know i won't get charged at all but i didn't want to risk anything i'm gonna wait until tomorrow to see if i got charged because if i didn't get charged then i'll be okay with buying the expansion for you know 43 uh, dollars which includes the tax and I'll be okay uh, but if I got charged then it will not be okay so um, you know but then but until they put it back of course so uh, I sort of just can't wait to record some wait a minute the sound is oh it's a good thing I noticed that now Okay, here we go. Okay, like that. All right, I don't know why this keeps changing the order. I, I wish I could just choose like the order that I put it in. Um, but anyways, yeah, the character I'm gonna play is uh, I'm going to be playing my Shada, which is my uh, elf hunter class, but I think my Hobbit is absolutely adorable. You guys saw a little taste of that when um, maybe I want to say a few days or so ago I put up a video of the Spring Fest, which is now over, but um, you can see I'm now using this uh, flower pack on my back. Perfect. And my Callisto, I changed her up a bit. She's also got the Honey Mount. She transforms into a bear. She's a Bjorning. So look at that. I got the Honey Cape, which has the uh, honeycomb uh, patterns. And a honey, jar of honey on the back. This is something we need to poo with like. And the honey is dripping from the cape. I love this but anyways I just I couldn't wait so um, I thought that I would record some footage of one of my um, 
one of my early or like low level characters. So Shada, my uh, elf hunter. So I'll play her and then if I'm able to get it tomorrow, which I think most likely I will be able to get Fates of Gundabad, uh, then I will start from the beginning a brawler. And I'm not going to reveal anything else other than it will be a brawler. I will not reveal the class um, or anything like that. Um, what else did I want to add? Um, I thought there was something I wanted to add. No. Nah, oh, the reason why I'm not streaming this is because when I looked at some of my past streams of this game, when I'm stationary like this, it, it looks good like this, and it's at 1440p. But even at 1440p, when I begin to move, it becomes blurry. So I didn't want to, um, you know, uh, you know, have it look like that. I don't know why, why it's like that, you know, for uh, for this game. I think it's not so bad when I do uh, when I do uh, Fallout New Vegas. Oh, hold on, just one second, guys. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so sorry about that. It's my mom's birthday. Uh, it's April 6th, and we have some birthday cake, so uh, I want to eat that. But, you know, um, I'll do a little bit of this. really really excited to be jumping back into middle earth kind of feel like seeing the lord of the rings um, films again i did see a, a good one which was um, you know in the same uh, genre as like lord of the rings called the barbarians uh, i'd seen that a long time ago um, it's a, a 1987 film starring the the paul brothers uh, the Barbarian Brothers, as I guess they're also known. And I seen it maybe, even though it came out in 87, I seen it maybe 1989, 1990, somewhere around there. Uh, and I didn't remember much, so and then I watched it uh, and saw it again. And I absolutely love it. Uh, it's a good film. But anyways, um, yeah, let me do this. I uh, changed my look a little bit with my hunter, what she's wearing, and she has a cool mount, a couple of them that I got. So I have this one that I got during the spring festival, and what I'm wearing is all spring festival stuff. And I also have this one. Uh, you know, we'll go with the horse for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. Um, is it now? Yeah. Uh, what quest do I want to work on? It's been so long, so I don't remember. Uh, oh, here. I was killing some bears and also killing some boar tusks, so... Um, Okay, so all around that area. Is that, uh, oh good, I can go to the uh, festival ground still from here. Uh, this is where I was killing the... Okay, here we are. And then I'm gonna turn them in. Oh, okay, that person is over here. Yeah, I really love the uh, the hunter. It's gonna be a ranger class, I heard, that's coming. I don't know if that's like a joke or like an April Fool's thing, but because a uh, ranger, it seems too similar to uh, a hunter, but I think they're, they, uh, they're gonna use more of like uh, 
physical and uh, tactical and you know so like melee and ranged combination of the two I guess very much close to like uh, Edogorn right Hunter I guess is more like uh, the Golas right so okay there's that I guess of a bow. I wish I could uh, get a bow again, but it's okay. Crossbow's cool too. I think initially uh, I did want a crossbow anyways. I don't know what the advantages are between the bow and the crossbow, but I don't know. I don't know which one is faster. And mainly because, uh, you know, I have a quiver on my back, so it's kind of odd. I have a quiver on my back, which uh, stores arrows, yet I'm using a crossbow. Oh, let me turn my find the path. On. Okay, so I'm moving quicker. Yeah, there's just something very satisfying about playing uh, you know, a ranged character like this and uh, playing like a, an archer, hunter. Super cool. Oops. I should uh, even kill the bear still. Uh, just whatever, because um, for XP, right? So cool. to start that brawler. Oh, I'm recording their chubs. Are we going to eat the cake now? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um... What I'm gonna do, guys, hold on, maybe I'll just kill, yeah, these last two boars. And then I'll stop the recording, and then uh, just continue the recording, and then uh, connect the two. See, it's great because my auto attack is, a, you know, shooting with my crossbow. And I use this attack, quick shot, which is great, so it's like it just makes me shoot uh, even quicker. It, you know, it has like a, uh, see, a point, point 0.5, like half a second, uh, like refresh before I can push it again. That's why it's called quick shot. So it's meant to, if you notice, pay attention to this when it, um, like it grays out for a moment and then I'm, I'm able to push it again. It's it's meant to see. It doesn't gray out, but oh, it's induction. So it's like um, like casting time. You know, it, it kind of like it takes a, a, a half second to uh, to shoot. You know, to shoot my uh, my crossbow. You know, to shoot a bolt. So after it shoots, 
and then I just push it again and again and again. It's like every second. Um, push it see. And what it is is when I push it, and um, sometimes I could take a break from it, or um, sometimes an auto attack of just a regular uh, attack from the from the crossbow will, you know, sneak in in between um, me doing quick shot. So, for example, here's an auto attack. See, I'm not gonna touch anything. See, I'm auto attacking right now. See, and see, it killed it right before it uh, even got to me. So. Really, it's like Legolas, you know. Except Legolas uh, uses a bow. Okay, so yeah, okay, and I just have to head back over there. Uh, that's gonna be it for now. I'm gonna see you guys in just a little bit, so it will be pretty seamless, you know, the next time you see me. And hopefully, if everything works out tomorrow, I'll be able to uh, play my brawler. Yeah, so, see you in a moment. Okay, welcome back to some more Lord of the Rings Online with Shada, my elf hunter. So the last time, <clears throat> which was just less than an hour ago, maybe, I, um... Uh, collected the last of the bear tusks or the um, boar tusks so now um, just have to deliver them to sage hayseed okay I'm looking forward to, I think it is update 33, maybe I'm wrong about that, but that, that number, but I thought it's maybe uh, update 33, and unless I'm remembering wrong, I think I read or maybe heard from a video that it's coming sometime late April, like April 23rd or something like that, so um, they're trying to of course, uh, coincide with, uh, not really coincide, but kind of prepare for um, maybe the new uh, influx of uh, fans that they'll be receiving when the Amazon Prime Lord of the Rings uh, prequel series comes out. And um, I think they're going to update the graphics. I don't know if that's going to be on that update. But sometime soon, sometime this year, they're gonna change the, or not change, but upgrade the graphics. And um, the way I feel about it is, um, I really love the look of the graphics already. I would not mind them updating it even further uh, than what they've been updating so far. But it looks pretty good, really good. I guess, um, if anything, Maybe they can keep this uh, kind of look, this art style, because um, this is really the uh, its signature style, you know, that Lord of the Rings Online has. Uh, and I love that. But I know most folks, you know, especially, you know, more younger people or people who have never played this kind of game, you know, uh, played this back in 2007. Um, this is going to look like crap to them and uh, like even now you know if they thought that this looks bad um, then they should have seen it you know back in maybe 2007 or when I played it 2010 2011 uh, yeah 
before they began, you know, updating, updating it over the course of the years, uh, even up until this point. Um, so I think this is going to be a tremendous revamp of the graphics, but hopefully it's not revamped so much that it's completely changed, like a whole new game, and all the gameplay is different, uh, everything, you know, it's just like maybe um, a graphical uh, facelift, but yet still keeping the charm of uh, the style of graphics. Um, I don't know if that makes any kind of sense, but um, just this, but you know, um, personified even further. I mean, look at this horse. It's it's absolutely gorgeous, you know, and just I kind of prefer the art style and the way these mounts and. Um, like the armor and stuff on on the on the mounts more here than in ESO I get more excited when I get a mount here than when somehow I get one in ESO you know I still really really like the ones in ESO but to me I don't know if, if maybe oh excuse me I don't know if maybe uh, I can think of maybe a couple things that maybe contribute to this uh, you know, this uh, Lotro, um, you know, mounts and pets versus uh, the ESO ones. I think, um, I guess like, well, I'll start off with saying with just the mounts themselves, it seems like the, it, it's really apparent that they're reskins, you know? I mean, sure, these are kind of like reskins as well, but I, I don't know, like here, let me get a different horse. Somehow it's it's just you know the the horse itself is like a repaint you know but okay now I feel like there's a little bit more subtle things like okay there's hair over here Oops. okay the the horse is hair mane is it called mane or is that a lion I'm not sure uh, let's take a look at this but you see. And I've seen some other horses where it's just short. It's like nothing or like kind of like a spike. So there's variation there that kind of, um, you know, um, it, to me, I feel like it goes a little bit above and beyond than just a generic reskin. Whereas with ESO, they've been reskinning so much with their mounts, like a lion. It's still a line and a line and a line mount you know it's it's like you just you have a black one and then and a red one and then they add different effects but it's just it's it's all all the same you know and the same thing with the horses and stuff uh, secondly it's see this this care cap, caparison I think I think it's called caparison this kind of blanket thing over the horse and the horse armor and stuff they're all very highly detailed very well done they really helps further differentiate you know the mounts you know and then you have of course like an elk and a goat you know uh, when they move they really feel different okay look look at the leg movement you see how that looks okay the way the leg of the horse uh, or of the elk moves now remember that now when I go on to this, it somehow feels different. It looks a little different. And the goat particularly um, feels different, you know. No, okay, look at that. It's not... Uh, exceedingly different but it's it's still it oh, it feels different nonetheless it looks kind of different nonetheless oh come on okay look again it's subtle but there see it seems like the front two legs are more in unison you know 
So it's things like that. Um, so in addition to, you know, the, you know, the, um, the look and the effort they put into their reskins on the mount, the other thing is uh, the cost. Uh, for ESO, you know, you, you kind of have to buy those mounts, you know. Uh, you get the crown points and then you use the crown, you uh, buy the crown points with, uh, with real money. And then you have to buy the crates and then be lucky enough to get the kind of mounts that you want. And that can get very, very expensive. And then sometimes they have, uh, you know, like a, a, a mount or two uh, where you can just straight up uh, buy them. You know, and but again, twenty to thirty dollars. You know, amount. These mounts that I have, I didn't pay anything for them. Uh, you earn them through festivals, and it just you just do the festival and, and play them, which doesn't take all that long. You know, you can just play them for about half an hour to an hour. You know, uh, just do uh, you know some of the activities. You know, kind of like when you go to a fair or a fest. Uh, whether it's a spring fest, you know, the anniversary fest, winter fest, fall fest, any of that, summer fest, um, and you earn tickets, Every, you know, everything, uh, everything is, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the currency, it's all earned through the game, and it's all uh, fake, fake money, fake, fake currency, you're not uh, using real money other than just time. To play the game but that's you know time is not really a factor because that's it's you know how, however little or as long as you want to play it you know and isn't by playing any game you're you're taking time so um that's the other thing i think the mounts are uh there's they're of higher quality in here in in detail to me uh there's a lot more effort in their uh uh, in the reskins and and variants i mean look at this see the horns here different that horns antlers on this uh elk is different from some of the other ones that you see some of them don't even you know they're shaped differently they uh, don't have these golden leaves growing out of it uh, so the quality of the mounts themselves to me are of um of higher uh higher quality um and second is uh, they don't cost real money, so it's both those factors that I think why uh, the mounts here come out the winner. Anyways, uh, um, hold on, let me just go ahead and turn these in. How can I be of service? Uh, these would do nicely and surely satisfy the order which I have. Uh, thank you for all that you have done thus far, friend. Okay, so he's gonna give me, she's gonna give me a crystal or a sapphire shard, and then. Uh, I completely forgot what my uh, vocation is. I don't even remember how to get into that. I don't remember. Oh, crafting? Nope. Okay, oh, alright, all right, great. I'm a Okay, explorer. So, tailor, forester, and prospector. Okay, just kidding. Wood or. Okay, um. Craft tool recipe. Let's. Yeah, let me. Okay, I'll go for that. How can I be of service? These are perfect. Are you a great deal, friend? Here, please take these and know that you have helped me greatly. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and. Oh. Do these tools. I don't have room? Oh yeah, I don't have room.
is this? Oh, okay, okay. It's tool for an arms man. Would you do something for me? Aside from boars, I was also hunting bears and... Okay, that's... Oh, these are just... Okay, they're repeatable. Okay, so that's good enough for that. Let's see, what else? Should do this one. The entrance to the old forest is to the south of Atso's camp. The spring lies westward within the forest. Okay, yeah, I know where this is. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, with this, uh, you know, kind of like revamp of Lord of the Rings Online, you know, in addition to, you know, um, an upgrade in graphics, which, like I said, I hope that, yeah, you know, they, they do uh, update it, I guess, and remaster it, yet not s uh, stray, stray too far, stray away, away from, uh, you know, the, the overall aesthetic of this look, this, uh, you know, kind of classic old school look. Just keep this um, art style just uh, upgraded, you know, if they can figure that out somehow. Uh, second is I hope that they don't really change the gameplay, you know, like, okay, here, let me get into combat here. Okay, see how combat is compared to Like say ESO for example, right? See, I'll do it again. See, everything is, you know, uh, this is old school RPG mechanics at its best, you know, in my personal opinion. Uh, you know, before they started, you know, gradually changing into a more um, action-oriented. Uh, style of uh, you know RPG games you know or RP games uh, like ESO you know it's it is an RPG but the way combat is it, it relies seemingly on more of your skill as a player you know to roll to dodge you know everything all in real time uh, here uh, you know it doesn't re you know with ESO and other games like it nowadays um, Seems like it requires uh, more on your physical prowess, you know, playing the game with mouse and keyboard or with controller uh, versus, you know, the off-camera dice rolls and the, the skills and attributes of your characters, you know. Um, I like it, you know, the, the old school way, you know, I like the, the letter, you know. So hopefully uh, that gets maintained, you know, the, the core gameplay of this game. I don't want, you know, you get rid of this kind of game play style and you, when, you know, they update it, you know, and, uh, you know, they make it more like uh, Elder Scrolls Online or, I mean, honestly, Elder Scrolls Online is the only MMO RPG I could think of uh, that's, you know, 
uh, I don't play a lot of MMORPGs, you know, it's like this one and, uh, and um, uh, ESO, right? But, uh, you know, ESO, and I'm sure there are other MMO games out there that are like that. Uh, like uh, Elder Scrolls Online, you know, quick-paced and relies more on your physical prowess as a player versus your character's skills. You know, I mean, it does, it does um, utilize... Oh, shit. It does utilize your character's skills, but like I said, it just seems like it's... Success and failure is a lot more dependent upon how quickly your fingers move, you know It's kind of like a, like a Wii game, right? Um, but yeah, I just hope that they uh, They maintain this style of um, you know gameplay mechanics. I prefer this uh, Now with all of that being said the things that I wish they would keep uh, you know there are things that I would not mind that they do tweak just to uh, make things a bit more easier on the player um, because there, there are things that uh, you know I do agree with with um, you know things like with ESO that they've uh, uh, made some advancements in those uh, you know, in RPGs and MMORPGs um, that I, I would not mind uh, seeing applied to something like this. Um, I'm just uh, trying to think right now uh, where to begin. I mean, there really isn't a whole lot, I guess, but... Um, Trying to think. Uh, oh, I guess um, I'm still kind of torn on this one, though. Actually, but have things uh, like uh, uh, account bound stuff and character bound things. Like, um, okay, let's take ESO for example. Uh, when I buy a mount or a pet or I get a mount or pet. On one character, I can go through all my other characters, and it will be unlocked for them as well. It it's like account um, everything you do in one character. It's it's account wide, account bound. Uh, there are things in this game where you could buy certain mounts also, because yeah, this this has mounts that you buy, but it's mostly like uh, like a steed of the minstrel, steed of the warden, you know, uh, the uh, kind of like class mounts, specialty class mounts, but then there's a shit ton of other mounts that you get. There, there's a shit ton more mounts from all of those uh, uh, festivals put together than what they have in the store. You know what I mean? Uh, and I think same goes for pets too, right? Uh, but uh, like these mounts here, like this elk, you know, that I have, I got it on her. I don't have it on, you know, I have it on Shada, right? I'm using it on Shada, but I don't have it on Whisperine. I don't have, you know, so if I want to get it on Whisperine, it, it kind of becomes like a grind then. Then I have to grind each character to get uh, a certain amount, you know. So I, I think, see, that that's why, I you know, a part of me was thinking I would, I would rather it, I, I would kind of like that idea, I guess, uh, that they uh, make that account wide. But, you know, on second thought, you know, as I'm thinking about it more and more, you know, um, this is like one I guess I struggle with. I kind of don't mind it as much, I guess, because uh, it, it it's kind of like um, one of those things that help differentiate your characters, right? See, I have this. I have this mount specifically on her that my other characters don't have like um, and I wouldn't even bother uh, trying to uh, get it on them because it's not it doesn't fit you know what they are this feels like it's more of like a hunter so just like how I'm you know with my skills and you know oops oh here it is uh, 
all this stuff here, you know, my class traits and all this, you know, it's it's all part of, you know, you, you, you build your hunter or your minstrel or your warden brawler, you know, which like that's the newest class. You build them the way you want, you know, with, you know, uh, the skills that you pick and you um, assign to your hotbar. So that helps differentiate your, uh, or customize your character from anyone else, but also your your fashion, you know, what, what you wear, uh, because that's, that's the thing. This is what I guess is a nice compromise, because I have, see all these, um, cosmetic outfits that can share between uh, you know characters but I guess uh, I guess I just feel like I wish it was easier to share it between my characters instead of having to because they're taking up taking up space maybe for these have it where because if, if these can get passed along you know, and there are certain ones that uh, do not uh, share, you know, certain cosmetics. Um, like for these, maybe have it where there's a, a separate window instead of taking up inventory space here. Uh, it's just, you know, like a checklist or a, a, like this, you know, lists down. And then you can just, you know, drag it, like wear it from there, which is kind of like uh, when you go to your bank, you have a wardrobe, you know, and it's all in there. Um, so, I mean, that, that's, yeah, I, I think that would be good. But yeah, so I guess that is part of the reason why, you know, the mounts and pets don't share is because you, it's, it's part of the charm of um, the thrill and the joy, I guess, of customizing your character. So I guess that's, that's cool too, I suppose. So now I'm like, um, I guess I'm, I'm trying to think of, uh, you know, what, what I wouldn't mind, uh, whoops, seeing, you know, I thought I'm supposed to search for the fresh spring. They said it was over here. Well, that's one thing is um, update this map. There we go. This is something I would, you know, I, I know I talked about the, the look and the charm of uh, the graphics of the games. This is one thing, <laughs> one part where I would not mind them actually updating this. And, you know, if they want to completely revamp this map, um, Please, please do so. You know, make make that better. Uh, and then there's the whole thing of porting, and I guess see like again, I guess I'm I'm okay with the the, the porting. Let, let's start to narrow this down, I guess, too, until I come across something that I feel as if will change. Because uh, when I was thinking about these these things in the past of what I would. Uh, like to change um, I, I had a, 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 a short list in my head at the time and now now that I'm not thinking about it you know I, I forgot it all like what what they were there because like I said there's a lot more good to this game uh, than bad and I really have to think on the maybe two maybe three things I would not mind them you know updating uh, but like I said the graphics is not um, um, not one of them, except for just to uh, you know update the graphics, update what what we already have here, you know. Um, so let's I guess kind of go through uh, you know the things you know the list of things that both games have and see which one I prefer. Because yeah, like like I said right now uh, in ESO ESO um, you can just porting is so easy I just open up my map and the um, the cost to port to another way shrine is so cheap you know it, it starts going up more and more if you port to um, you know other way shrines too close together 
uh, or when you travel to player, it is um, absolutely free in here. I can't just port to another player. So if I'm playing with my brother or some other guildie, and they're far away somewhere, you know, they're all the way maybe, I don't know, here in Misty Mountains, I actually have to travel there unless I have, uh, you know, a milestone that I can port to somewhere closer. But I actually have to travel there or I think like for the hunter they have to have like a certain skill to maybe port another player I don't know exactly how that's done but I think um, uh, I had a, a hunter do that for me one time you know ported me to Riv uh, Rivendell uh, so it's it's um, this way it feels like uh, there's a more sense of danger you know and when someone does arrive like a friend ar arrives or like your your entourage you manage to gather together you know somewhere in some faraway location i guess when that happens then it feels a lot more satisfying because it wasn't so easy to do that you know you you don't uh, whereas in eso oh no, just everyone can just port to john or someone and then you're all there like in like 20 seconds 30 seconds and you're all together here everyone has to they're coming from different places unless you've started off like very close or already together and then it takes an effort and it can take some time to get to another person and everyone has to wait on someone uh so yeah sure there's the convenience of that in like elder scrolls online but to do that i guess it will take away from uh the um the I'm trying to find the right words, but the uh, this the satisfying feeling that you get when everyone does come together, you know, uh, because more effort, more work has been done. Uh, an example for uh, like in Elder Scrolls Online, when I got my uh, uh, my I think it's uh, Eben Eben Dwarven uh, Wolf. Uh, it's a uh, uh, a, a robotic mount kind of like a, you know automatron uh, wolf I had to gather all the pieces together and, and it was not easy some parts were like rare for that to, to drop and you just have to grind for that and this is one of those rare mounts where I didn't have to pay any money no one had to pay for this you just had to earn it by playing the game and then when I got all I think there were like 15 pieces uh, you put them all together and then you got the Ebon Dwarven Wolf Mount and it felt so great when it finally happened because you put the work into it so it's kind of like with this it seems like it's more of putting work into things and then you get rewarded for your hard efforts or when you're alone in a situation somewhere in the game world uh, in some real danger and um, and you know that if you want your friends to come you know you, you kind of have to wait there or say if you can't wait you're in the middle of something and and you know they, you're, you know you, you kind of you know just was walking around a little bit to see if you can get out of it and suddenly you, you get attacked uh, you have to really hope that you know your friends arrive in time and then it feels very satisfying when they they do arrive you know the shot is great you know just looking at this road uh, I don't get that you know in something like ESO even though the graphics are clearly better in ESO like I said there is a charm in these graphics that I absolutely love it's like a, a very lovely highly detailed Pascal painting a work of uh, art oh, find the spring okay hold on I'm actually talking more than the entrance to the old forest is to the south of well okay so I guess I'll just head on in here yeah sorry about that I just got carried away you know explaining uh, what I love about uh, this game you know why I think everyone should give this a try and that's somehow not always the case I tried to get a friend uh, into this but it, I guess it's just too old for him you know he um, doesn't have nostalgia with it for one but uh, even still, hopefully if they do upgrade these graphics, because I, I, I get the feeling that the graphics have a big role to play. Like when people see 
Oh, is, was it always here all this time? Did it show it there? Uh, when they, you know, first, it's first impressions, really. You know, when this is like the first thing they, they see are the graphics of the game. Uh, when they see it looking old as shit like this, uh, they're turned off immediately from that and they just don't want to play it. So it's very sad. Uh, and then second of all, when they do kind of try to force themselves to look past that and then they do play it, uh, maybe they just don't like the gameplay. They don't like the, the auto attack, <laughs> one of his complaints. So I, I don't know what to say. Uh, maybe... Again, I guess it just it comes out. Although this this friend of mine is is also a, a younger person, so that's another thing. Oh shit! I mean, fuck! I keep. Okay, maybe I'll, I'll take it on foot just so I can. I'm bound to be attacked here, and I don't want them getting close to me. You know what? Did I? I know that, uh, oh shit, there are quests around this area where, um, I think they're like telling me to kill, hold on, let me go out here again, shit, I'm about to get attacked, like I have to kill a certain amount of, uh, trees and wolves and since I'm here I may as well pick that quest up to get that. Whoa, whoa, wait. So I mean oh that's Another big issue, okay, for me, is the housing. For God's sakes, um, you know, standing stones. Um, make the houses, uh, like once you buy them, uh, you don't have to keep paying, uh, you know, paying rent, I guess. I mean, please, please, I mean, um, you know, in ESO, when you buy a house, but again, you buy them with real cash, and here you buy them just with fake gold. Um, but still, I, I just really feel... I would actually... I would not mind if... Or would I mind? No, I think maybe I would mind if they charged real money for these homes. Because look at ESO. I mean, they charge anywhere from, like, $30 a home... That's USD, you know, real cash, all the way up to like a hundred, maybe even a little over a hundred, depending upon how big the house is. Uh, okay, yeah, it doesn't look like there's... No one has a quest out over here for, you know, to kill, uh, unless... This is oh, he just... Okay, so he's the guy who gave me that quest. Okay, let's head back in. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, the housing. Make it so that... I, I very much prefer that that you um, and that you don't have to be, um, you know, a subscriber, because su subscribers get, uh, you know, I guess free free rent. You know, they don't have to uh, pay, you know, uh, a maintenance fee every so often. You know, so in here it's like you have to pay, you know, rent. You have to pay the mortgage. You know. Uh, I, I wish that they would just take that away and just make it so that whether you're a VIP or a subscriber, you you know you just pay for it one time. Because sometimes people like to take breaks, you know, and when they do, what ends up happening is if you uh, neglect payment and you have like a deadline, but you know people go away from this game several months to like a year. Uh, by then, things, you know, what will happen is once it goes past that, you know, your your deadline, um, uh, you will lose the house uh, and all your stuff going to escrow. What the hell? Oh. And then, um, 
when that happens, you have like two weeks, and then all your stuff goes poof. It's gone, and s a lot of this stuff can be hard to, uh, um, not hard to acquire, but it just, you literally have to wait till, you know, the next festival. Like maybe you got something during the Christmas fest, and it's only spring fest. Now you have to wait until Christmas again to try to earn it again, and sometimes people don't want to do that. I know I don't want to do that. So, you know, please, for the love of God, standing stones, please uh, get rid of that that um, fee, you know, that, that the mortgage thing. Uh, that's like, sure, it's old school um, kind of, a, you know, idea for the game. And it adds like, I guess, immersion. But uh, there's certain things that we just don't want to think about, you know. So I wish there was that. And second of all, I mean, they're doing this that you have to pay, you know, a, a mortgage. And these houses, as charming as they are, the way you decorate them, they're not really all that great. You know, it's, you know, I wouldn't mind them uh, kind of updating, you know, how you place the furniture. Because as it is now, it feels more like you're just setting things on display rather than um, decorating, you know. Um, they need to somehow find a, a more user-friendly way, an updated way to do that. So a lot of my complaints really, um, I guess, is more just like how they handle the, uh, the housing, you know. Oh, and that's another thing, another complaint. Yeah, really, I think the gameplay and stuff and the story is all just very solid. You don't even have to add uh, voice acting, you know, just... The way, you know, the, the, the voice acting that they have already, you know, when especially when it comes to the non-main uh, characters, just the side characters, maybe they'll speak the first couple lines of the paragraph or the paraphrase, what is written, and then you have to read everything else. I like that idea, you know, it's very Daggerfall-esque, Morrowind-esque, and, and I love that. Um, freaking pass it up I'm like not paying attention to where I'm going I'm just randomly killing and um, so that's quite good but uh, it's my complaints I guess would just be the housing you know the, the way they handle that uh, the final thing I guess of note is uh, the final thing that I would uh, final complaint uh, for the housing would be that they uh, allow you to buy more than one. Now I understand that there's like a limited amount because in ESO you can have all the houses if you want, if you can afford that. It's going to probably cost you, I don't know, several hundreds of dollars for that. Uh, here everything, the houses aren't in an instance really, so if someone takes a, a, a property I mean they, they all have uh, it's hard to explain they're a separate um, they're like consider them like mini servers you know and there's several several like dozens and dozens you know like tree garth and Aldar you know from A to Z and when you go into them each one is like a little mini multiverse you know and uh, when you buy a, a house, you know, you get an address and everything, you know, like three Wennington Drive and then four Wennington Drive, you know, whatever. There's different, you know, just, just like in real life. When you buy a house, uh, that's it. Now it's taken in that location. See if you like that location. So if you want that same house, you have to go to a different multiverse and try to try to f you know find that try to find a, a, a house that's available in that multiverse you know what I mean okay here we go here we go um, so I understand that but there's still plenty of houses I don't know if uh, how that would work maybe maybe they can come to a, a compromise where at least if not you know a multitude of houses half as able to buy at least two houses because the one house you buy it gets shared across your your all your characters you know 
with your whole account. I bid you so, wanderer in the wood. I would not be opposed to uh, being able to buy, you know, at least two, maybe three houses, you know, per account. I think that would be fine. Uh, because it's, it's great because, um, you know, people can just, you know, if they're walking around the neighborhood, they can actually pass by your house and see, you know, what decor... Oh, I can't do that. Yeah. Uh, see what decorations... Uh, what am I supposed to do? Oh, shit. Okay, okay. Yeah, you know, and just kind of admire your decorations, you know? And that's really cool. And you can't quite do that in here, so people have to be invited uh, to go there. You know, they can't just stumble across it you know uh and that's that's another thing each house is in a different instance in eso so um say if i own and i do own it um tell gallon right it's a home it's called tell gallon it's a mushroom kind of home in uh morrowind a hundred other people can also own oh shit can also own um, Telgillen with their own decorations. Do you see what I mean? In here it's not quite like that. If a spot is taken, then it's taken. You have to move on to the next multiverse and hope that, you know, that location is available to you. And if everyone happened to buy that location and there's one lone one out there and you just never find it then you that's it you know you're out of luck and you have to uh, settle on a, a different house you know that's you know you know maybe the neighbor you know the neighboring house or something or something totally different but yeah the, the housing thing is uh, what I would change but in terms of gameplay I guess that's why I was having a hard time trying to remember what it was because I was trying to think of gameplay mechanics that I had an issue with and I was drawing a blank and that's because all of my issues are in the housing system you know of Lotro so that is the one thing for me that I feel needs to get updated that and this this abysmal map you know I think they just need to make that better <laughs> uh, the inventory you know somehow I don't know, make it bigger. I mean, there's certain things like, and this, let us be able to make this bigger somehow. But I love being able to customize my, uh, was it this? Yeah, see, this. Uh, I love being able to customize my, uh, my HUD, you know, or not my, is it HUD? Uh, my, my, my user interface. You know, I can move my mini map up here, you know, and that, so. I love that, you know. Please, you know, keep everything else the same. For me, it's almost like at least maybe 97, 98% of this game, you know, should remain the same. I love it. Tell me oh, what you need go. Okay, or great. move along. Um Something so I can sell it. Why are you bothering me? Yeah, you can, um, you can have that back. Here we go. Okay, so. Let me actually uh, just continue playing. Sorry, you'll, you'll notice that the more um, into the game I get, I start to get, I have a hard time, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, uh, walking and 
chewing bubble gum at the same time kind of thing or when they say like rub your stomach and pat your head at the same time you know like multitasking certain things like that uh, when I'm trying to explain something and I'm playing the game and moving uh, I, I have a hard time uh, juggling two things you know talking about it and especially when I'm trying to go if I'm just generally talking about what I'm doing playing that's absolutely not an issue um, you'll see that in the first part of this video before I uh, had the cake and I was able to uh, express myself uh, fully the way I, I intended to but when I'm talking about complaints you know and, and doing things but I'm, I'm doing a, an, another quest you know they're completely separate things I have uh, an issue with that so I apologize for that um, so now let me let me be completely focused on on this uh, game and, and actually play right um, by axe and fire fine gill sand heavers walking tree Walt Whitrose mentioned that Gil Sandheaver had come from the north and east, where the lake meets the woodland. Walt believes it is worth looking into Gil's claims that trees were walking near Nen. Okay, yeah, is this um? Yeah. All right, let me see here. Oh wow, it's all the way over here. I'm not talking about these walking trees. All right. Checking the borders. Talk to Adreg at the. This is another thing I love. Look at that. I can just move this. Uh, all this, please. Let let all this stay. You know, update it, but keep all this old school shit. You know, please. Um, you should return to Andreg and tell him about the orc camp. That you discovered along the gorge in the northernmost reaches of Greenland. Okay. And snapper soup. Uh, collect chunks of snapper meat. Okay, so I was like in the middle of doing that one as well. Okay. And I think all of these might be in that same region. Let's look and see. Okay, that one is here. Checking the borders. Mm hmm. Okay, let's do it. What's also kind of cool is um, I like uh, like the the speed of the mount, how how it's handled uh, in ESO. I think it goes up to I, I can't remember, but you train in three different categories. You know, there's stamina. Um, inventory or capacity uh, and um, movement speed of your mount in ESO and once you get everything to rank 10 10 and 10 I think it's 10 uh, I can't remember as it's been such a long time uh, it's everyone is the same everyone you know if I'm 10 out of 10 on all three categories it's it's the same as everyone else um, in here, unless you buy a, uh, I forgot exactly what you call it, but they're kind of like a, like a speed pack or some kind of, uh, mount pack. And, and I did get it. There was a, a thing where it was on sale that it was normally, uh, 2,500 to like 3,000, um, Lotra points, Lotra, whatever this money is. Um, what is it? L Lotra points. Yeah, you know, Lotra points. It was like 3,000 Lotra points. Something like that. But it was like 85 or 90% off. And my brother and I jumped on that. 
and we got it for like 700 points versus the 3k I mean we could not pass that up that is why all of our mounts can run at 78% speed they have a speed of 78 but if not for that initially your your mounts I think run at like um, like the starter horse is like maybe 38 or 42 percent speed um, and then some of the typically uh, standard mounts are like 62 percent speed uh, and then 62 and then I think 68 for certain you know different mounts like that the mounts have a different speed to them if you didn't alter them with any kind of uh, you know um, like writing skill pack thing which I did uh, but I could turn that off as you can see I can suppress it and now my horse will go 62 percent see so these are all 62 percent speed mounts but I believe I may even have certain ones that are okay all my mounts are 62 but there's certain ones that are 68 Let me turn that off okay so you see another thing too is that um, the writing skill trait this one here see uh, this one you actually have to learn it through the game you know and you have to be a certain level I think I can't remember exactly what level and um, the other way is if you just buy the writing trait uh, in the store well now because I got that thing that I like I said that was on sale it was like 85 90 percent off and got it for 700 which all my mounts now run at 78 percent speed it's all my characters that I have currently and create in the future because it's account bound will start off with the writing skill so that was such a value you know but typically you know um, you know it, it's I guess it's a lot harder to uh, and not everyone bought this thing maybe some people bought the you know the the, the lesser one of this the one that's maybe only 68 percent speed and not the 78 percent one so there's I guess a lot more chance that um, people will have uh, different varying speeds of mount some of them will you know maybe be you know especially like the earlier people might have their mounts at six or 42 percent you know because of the beginner mount and um, other people might have you know 62 percent and some will have you know 68 percent depending upon your mount so I kind of how can I'll be like this? Okay, so I'm done with that. Oh, hey, and I leveled. A Gundabad Allegiance available. Gundabad Allegiances are now available. Each powerful rewards and experience the story of Zelruka. Access the new Allegiance panel to begin these new adventures. Okay. What I take a moment for your time? Um. Uh, Saradan must know that through our efforts here are successful. Must know that although our efforts here are successful, we cannot know the breadth of invasion southwards. He must also know that our brethren to the north have been unable to prevent the spread of the orc tribes. Make your way south along the greenway to find his cabin and bring him these tidings. Okay, so... Yeah, okay, I'll take that. I'm not just down over here, okay. Oh, I'm on my mount. So yeah, I, I guess that's what I'm saying about with the mounts is I, I like how not all mounts have um, equal speed you know if if you leave it unaltered without buying any kind of pack 
otherwise everyone's amount will have the same speed but it's it's cool you know you know maybe uh, and see I, I could suppress this if I like you see what I mean but why would I I mean I paid money for it and I, I like being able to go fast anyways but not everyone will you know buy that you know and um, and if not then you know their mounts would be different like this mount that I'm on here if someone didn't get that pack they'll be going 68 percent you know how can I be of service where we succeed in stopping their spread here we fail in the north this is dire news. Worse yet is the news that we likely did not prevent all of the orcs from moving through Breeland. I fear for the lives of the rangers watching the passes and roadways throughout the southern reaches. I will continue to hold my post, but I must ask you for more assistance. For all your efforts thus far, however, I offer you thanks and this small token of our appreciation. Okay, oh, so you rewarded me with this. Okay, I'm sorry. Whoops. What do you need? Uh, that's a little... What do you need? I mean, if... This game has one thing, it's like... Uh, if there's one thing uh, this game has is not a... That doesn't have is a, a shortage of uh, quests. Like, everywhere you go, there's always a quest you can accept or decline. Uh, you know, whichever ones you want. I love that. You know what? Give me just a second here. Hold on. Okay. You know, I have about um, 30 gigs left, but I've been going on for about an hour, so I think what I'll do is, uh, whoops, I'll go this way, and once I reach this area here, uh, I think I'm gonna stop it. And uh, like I said, if all goes well uh, and I didn't get charged, I'm just going to go ahead and buy the Fate of Gundabad expansion, and tomorrow I will start uh, my brawler, you know, from the beginning. And um, <clears throat> I'll try to uh, free up uh, even more space, so then I can uh, maybe make that uh, another long session. Um, but I, I really feel as if, like, it, it shouldn't really go more than, uh, you know, an hour, an hour and a half, so. Because I think if it's just too long, you know, um, not everyone is gonna maybe stay for that. Uh, you know, the, the whole um, mail system, mailing, how you you know mail to other people uh, I think uh, works out and very immersive uh, I know when you're a, uh, a a member though you can access your mail uh, anywhere oh, or can't well let's take a look at this hold on yeah this was the first town that I started off in. Let's uh, just kind of go ahead and uh, I, I think I'm gonna end it here. I'm just gonna take a look around the Arquette and as you can see it's all completely destroyed because uh, you know of the attack that uh, happened as part of the storyline but this place was glorious to look at before. Oh, what do you have to say to me? Could I speak with you a moment? Oh, it's got those uh, level five quests. But yeah, that's what I love. I mean, you can still choose to do them just for uh, role playing purposes, you know, doing those low level quests, or you can just choose to skip them and just do, you know, more of the higher ones. I'm already uh, level 25 or 24, so I, I think I I'm not really going to do quests that are under like 21 or something like that, or 22. Um, 
And that's another thing I love about this game. It's just when I'm trying to think of, you know, gameplay mechanics that I want to complain about in this game to say that I, I would not mind them changing. I can't think of a one other than, like I said, all that housing stuff I wish they would change. But something that this game has over, something like Elder Scrolls Online, and I know I'm, I'm crapping all over ESO, it sounds, but uh, I still really, really love that game too, but this one just has a certain charm that can't be replicated uh, anywhere else, you know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. But uh, the, the music in here, you know, when you play music... Uh, play your instrument in here I think it's it's much better because in um, you could play an instrument in um, ESO as well but it's always just like a generic you know like an emo and then everyone plays something kind of random uh, here you can download ABC files and actually play songs and let me see if I can um, get into that right now but I don't have an instrument on me so I can't yeah, I, I can't um, show you that, but um, you basically can equip, you know, like a lute or flute or any kind of uh, instrument, a drum. There's uh, quite a handful of different, uh, you know, variety of instruments you can play. And uh, you can either play together as a group and everyone syncs up, which you can't do that in ESO, ESO uh, or you can play solo or just duets. And... I love that it's it's very robust you know just just that little aspect of this game you know just to be able to play musical instruments they, they could have just gone the cheap route like ESO I'm sorry to report where you just generically play an instrument you just whip out your lute and then you play uh, here they took it a step further and they went into detail and that's not even the point of this game you know um, Although, you know, of course, being a minstrel, yeah, but anyone can, you know, pick up an instrument, any class, and, and play. And that's what I love. Uh, and I love the minstrel class, minstrel slash bard class. And there's, I've said this before, but not a lot of uh, games out there uh, have that. Um, you have, of course, the uh, uh, Baldur's Gate 3, and even though they didn't put it out, they do intend to put a bard class out. But I, the bard is such an underrated character class, I think. Um, anyways, yeah, I think I'm going to end it. That'll do it for now. And um, just get this shot at an obliterated Arquette. And hopefully tomorrow I will be able to play a Brawler class. And um, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, so that's it. And see ya.